Hello everyone and welcome to this um, third part in the OpenGL video tutorial series in which we are um, using C Sharp. Um, so uh, in the last uh, previous part we had this result, um, uh, this simple triangle uh, which is drawn in 2D projection, orthographic projection. Um, so um, we are going to work with colors in this part and then we are um, gonna move on to simple basic rotation animation uh, although rotation is a part of transformations but we are not going to uh, study all of that uh, right now I'll just give you a basic hint about rotation and then we'll just uh, do the animation uh, necessary so the color uh, is set using the gl dot um, sorry gl dot color com uh, function call to gl dot color function so there are actually two color three and color four uh, so the color four function uh, takes four arguments the intensity of red green blue and alpha values um, uh, we talked uh, earlier about the rgb values rgba values but uh, we did not discuss the alpha yet and uh, um, so we do not need to use it right now because uh, alpha is actually related with transparency and blending uh, all of that stuff we'll do it later so um, we'll just use the color 3 command which takes red green and blue uh, colors as the arguments and alpha, val uh, alpha value is set to default automatically so we just specify a color using the intensity of red green and blue colors so we talked about that now uh, the intensity is between uh, 0 and 1 uh, although there are many overloads for this function uh, but the one we're going to use is uh, the three double values so uh, although you can uh, specify floating points using uh, 34 uh, 32 bit floating points using the f prefix but we'll not worry about that right now we'll just uh, specify double precision floating points so here we have a red color um, so we should get a red triangle now there we go so mm, the next thing um, you can uh, try your own experiments uh, mixing equal amounts of red and green color will give you yellow similarly the full amount of red and half the amount of green will give you uh, some a bit like orange I think yes um, so uh, you should know that the color you specify uh, is a state variable so once you specify the color it stays the same so all the vertices following this uh, call to this color 3 function using these arguments will be drawn in the same color uh, also after swapping the buffers and the next frame the color will remain same until you change it so because this is a state variable and the state variables do not change unless you yourself change them so uh, the color is specified for each vertex so actually you can what you can do is you can specify different colors to different vertices so we'll just now check that what happens when you specify different colors to the vertices uh, which make up a single primitive in this case the, these three vertices uh, make up this triangle so we'll specify the different colors to all of these so the first vertex is red second one is blue and third one uh, sorry second one is green and the third one is blue rgb so now let's see what result we get um, so there we have uh, the three vertices have their own colors and the um, colors are blended because these um, vertices are all uh, make up the same triangle so uh, three vertices of the same triangle have different colors so these colors will be equally blended um, so now uh, we'll, uh, we will move on to animation but before that we should try drawing another primitive so but currently the projection we have let's try changing a projection first so uh, first, uh, firstly, the current window we have has this coordinate system 0, 0 here, 
and then 50 comma 50 at this point so this is a 2d orthographic projection we uh, uh, specified it in the previous parts um, so we will now actually try to change it to another type um, which has the axis like this the x-axis and the y-axis and we have our origin at the center of the screen and we have this length equal to 50 so uh, and this length also equal to 50 similarly um, all other lengths this also equal to 50 and this equal to 50 so we will now have all the quadrants in the screen so we will use this as the first quadrant positive and positive and this uh, the second quadrant the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant so the third quadrant both we have negative values uh, you should know this is just some basic high school mathematics so the reason that we are doing this is because uh, we need to rotate and the rotation takes place along an axis uh, which is uh, along a vector actually mm, vector it takes place along the vector as an axis so uh, so if you specify this point and so let's assume that this is our vector uh, the first thing actually I'll demonstrate this using 3d coordinate system so the x y and z axis so let's suppose that um, this is our vector which points to this direction and so the rotation will take place along it following the right hand rule uh, so the right hand rule means that uh, if the vertex is pointing uh, out outwards of the screen like towards us then the rotation will takes uh, take place counterclockwise so what we want here is that um, let's suppose that uh, we have our square on the screen like this suppose we have a primitive on the screen like this then um, we want to rotate it along this z-axis so we will specify our vector which uh, is same as z-axis and points outwards uh, on the positive side of the z-axis we should know that the uh, uh, value of z-axis coming out of uh, towards us is positive so the positive side of z-axis is out of the screen so this is how rotation works and actually uh, the rotation takes place uh, on the coordinate system so actually uh, the coordinate system is rotated so like we this is our current coordinate system and after uh, 30 degree rotation the new coordinate system will become like this and this angle being 30 degrees so uh, and rotation uh, and now once it is rotated the any other primitives which are being drawn onto the screen will be drawn this way but uh, if you first draw your primitive uh, like you've drawn a square and then you call the function in OpenGL for the rotation then the coordinate system will be rotated but the primitives which uh, have already been drawn will not be rotated anymore so the primitives you draw after rotation will be drawn on the rotated coordinate system but those which have actually already been drawn uh, will not be affected so before we uh, start rotating uh, let's just see what type of primitives do we want on the screen so we just want a simple square on the screen like this oh, this is, looks like a rectangle uh, okay so we want this kind of square and we'll rotate it along the z-axis because the z-axis is pointing towards us so that means uh, we'll rotate it this way counterclockwise so we need to specify the z-axis as the vector for rotation so uh, we first need to draw a square which look like looks like this um, so we already have our three vertices but um, we'll just kind of remove all these uh, so first we'll change the coordinate system to the uh, to the version that I showed you here uh, before that minus 50 and minus 50 so the coordinate system that we have now after call to this function um, will have its origin at the center 0 comma 0 and then this point 50 comma 50 this one minus 50 comma minus 50 
So uh, the four quadrants will now be on the screen. So uh, if we do not, uh, so now we can start drawing our cube. So I'll just copy these function calls and paste them here. So the first word, uh, the first vertex will draw in red color. And so 30 and then this one will be minus 30.0 comma 30.0 and similarly the next one and the last one 30 comma 0 comma minus 30 and we can try and apply different colors to these the first one red the second one green the third one blue and the fourth one um, we can use yellow color by mixing equal amounts of uh, red and green so first we'll check that we have and uh, now it is being drawn as a triangle again that's because we are using triangles as a primitive so we will now use quads primitive i explained it in the previous video tutorial uh, the four pair of four vertices is joined into a quadrilateral if we use quads as a primitive so the four vertices you specify will be joined into a quadrilateral so we'll use quads as a primitive now and now we'll compile and run it and we should get a uh, square on the screen so now we'll begin with uh, rotation i explained you that rotation takes place along an axis so the function that you use is gl dot rotate so uh, make sure that you call this function before you begin drawing a, uh, before the call to gl dot begin function because once this is called uh, you cannot specify any rotation uh, until the call to GL end uh, and before we rotate anything on the screen um, I'll tell you about this loader entity function uh, that resets the state of the met current metrics so we used it for the projection metrics to reset the state of projection metrics but but currently we are in the model view metrics and so the load add entity function will uh, clear all the transformations rotation scaling so any changes that have been applied to the uh, coordinate system so we do not want to retain the animation uh, rotation that has been done for the previous frame so like we do um, a, a rotation of 10 degrees for this frame so the next frame uh, will add 10 degrees more rotation so that rotation will go on increasing so that will not be desirable so every time a frame is displayed we'll first uh, reset the state of the matrix using the load identity function so this call will reset all of the transformations rotation scaling so uh, we can now rotate it uh, and the rotation will not be retained for the next frame it will again be rotated so our primitive will at least not move so uh, third, uh, we want 30 degrees rotation and the vector I explained you about it so the values for rotation along z axis so this just specifies that we want a uh, 30 degree ro rotation counterclockwise on uh, along z axis and after the rotation we draw this and when the next frame is displayed the first first the rotation is cleared because we are calling this load identity function and then we are uh, then again the rotation is applied so the posi uh, the position of the primitive will remain same it won't change So we can now just compile and run it to check if we are getting the rotation. So here we have our square is now rotated 30 degrees. So uh, now we'll start with animation. So we already know that this is already being called uh, 60 times in a second, this function, because 60 frames are displayed in one second. We set the frame rate uh, when we call the run function for the window. Um, so 
since uh, we are uh, this frame uh, this function is already being called 60 times a second we can uh, increase the amount of rotation which is done for every successive frame so what we can do is we can specify a variable here double um, let's just call it theta theta represents an angle so at initially the angle will be equal to zero and so uh, the rotation that uh, the angle of rotation will be equal to theta and at the end the value of theta will be increased oops theta plus equal to 0 0.1 oh, that will be too small 1.0 so uh, in one second 60 frames are being called so that means in one second the rotation we can just calculate it I do not like to do the math here So there we go, we do have our rotation now. So every time the frame is being called, um, some rotation is being applied to it. And we are incrementing the value of theta. So uh, you'll just wonder that what if the value of theta goes above 360 degrees. So it is uh, clamped automatically to the uh, value between 1 and 360. So if suppose if the value is 363 so the value will all uh, automatically will be clamped to 3 degrees so uh, if you uh, want uh, for your own uh, satisfaction you can what you can do is if uh, theta is greater than 360 degree you can already uh, yourself clamp it to a value between 0 and 360 so theta will be equal to th minus equal to 360 so you can uh, clamp the whole variable although when you call the rotate uh, function this the this value that you pass into it is uh, automatically being clamped so uh, it won't change anything although um, so this was all but uh, I'll let you know that this uh, the render frame function is used only for rendering not applying the uh, updates uh, to our uh, variables which hold the transformation rotation and other stuff for our world um, this is because uh, if some frames are not being rendered uh, because of the low performance of the cpu then the updates will also not be applied so uh, for that we use another event handler which is called uh, update frame so this event handler is used only for updating but uh, currently uh, our application is not that heavy so uh, we'll not worry about that right now but you should know that this is not the best place to apply updates uh, but uh, in future as we uh, move on um, we will discuss about the update frame function and we will use that to apply the updates to our world so this is all for this video uh, and I currently do not have any plans that what I will do in the next part but uh, I'll think it up. Uh, so till then goodbye and take care.